When a very large uh, truck went over the bridge, we saw the bridge dip a little. It is by far, in my opinion, the most user-friendly software out there. So I can take a, a party chief who's been in the field for a couple of years and I can teach him Topo dot in half an hour. Welcome to Tuck. Thank you. Happy Topodot. to be back. Yeah, Topodot 2019 already. Mm -hmm. What is your name? Scott Osterhout with ESP Associates, Inc. Just give me a little snippet about ESP. Uh, ESP is a small company, uh, about 450 people at this point. We're growing every day. Uh, we're basically uh, majority in the southeast, uh, eastern seaboard. Uh, we're, um, we do engineering, geotech, surveying. Um, we cover basically the whole gamut. So tell me about this project that you got involved with. It, and it was almost a little test from an old employer of mine from 20 years ago who uh, wanted some help on a project and he said, what would you do on this job? And so the job is a is a thousand foot bridge over a river in Augusta, Georgia. Um, and he wanted to survey the top of the bridge and underneath the bridge as well and wasn't sure how to do all that uh, with traditional equipment. Um, so we, we proposed to bring the mobile truck down, survey the roads and the bridge using the mobile truck. We took the scanner off the truck, put it on our 16 foot boat scanned uh, the, from the river and uh, made multiple passes. And then we also had a bathymetric sounder connected to the boat as well. And so we surveyed the river floor of the Savannah River while we were out there as well. So that must have been quite challenging, having all these different types of equipment and also connecting everything together. A little bit. Uh, and I left out one key part that we also did static scanning, uh, which helped us tie all that together. So we did static scanning in the uh, very intricate areas of the abutment, but then also we did SX10 static data all across the entire bridge to help us tie the boat scan to the truck scan. Tell me a, a little bit about the challenges that you had with the project and what the customer wanted to achieve. Uh, the customer was looking to see if the bridge was safe enough for pedestrian use. It was currently in use for vehicle traffic. Uh, as we were standing there working, we noticed there were some issues with the bridge. Um, pieces were broken, pieces were missing. Um, when a very large uh, truck went over the bridge, we saw the bridge dip a little. The downstream effects were they, they needed to retrofit the bridge and, and shore it up so that it was gonna be safe for pedestrians in the future. The company we were working for, Cranston, was uh, not sure even how to tackle it. So we came in with the expertise and we were able to give them what they want. Uh, they had surveyed the bridge back in, you know, probably the 70s or 80s. And so they had original coordinates and, and elevations from way back then. We were able to take our data and tie it into the original construction alignment from the original construction plans, which were 1930s, and come off and be on the exact same coordinate system and station stationing system as the original construction plans. Yeah. Have you heard of Topodot? Did you know about Topodot before? This is my... <laughs> third time at Topodot. Okay. Um, when I was with a previous company before that is when I started using it and it was a three-hour session watching videos at my desk and I was off and running and I was the expert. Right. In four hours I was the expert because I was the only one there that could do it. It is by far in my opinion the most user-friendly software out there. Yeah. Anyone who's ever surveyed can take this software and hit the ground running. Yeah. Why would you say it's so easy and such a nice piece of software? I think the way that it's been designed, is it's, it's from a surveyor's point of view. Um, a lot of things, they, they try to make them too fancy and, and, and put too many bells and whistles and things uh, and make too many things that are automated, which they have a lot of automated tools and they work well. But you know, when you take it from a, a top-down view, which is what we're all used to looking at in CAD, and you put that in conjunction with a cross-section view, which is how the surveyor's mind thinks. When he's out in the field, he's thinking top of ditch, bottom of ditch, top of ditch road, you know, and that's how their brain works. When you give them those two options to see, it just clicks immediately. Uh, so I can take a, a party chief who's been in the field for a couple of years and I can teach him Topo Dot in half an hour right. and have him off and run. He's not going to be an expert. No, but, but he, he can do the vital checks that he needs to do. Exactly. How much have you seen Topo Dot change over the years? 
quite a bit. Uh, the the automation is getting better and better every single year. I like the extra control checks we have now, where it actually auto register or auto detects panels, and we can do control checks using that as well. It's a lo it's that's gotten a lot better. That was a very tedious process in the very beginning. That has uh, made our life very easy. Um, the data comparisons of uh, one cloud to another cloud, it, it just makes my job so much easier. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, I just can't say enough about the customer service of Topo. Yes. Dot. So taking us back to the project, okay. what were some of the credentials, the before and after? So if you'd done it in traditional survey and traditionally um, looked at the point clouds and what you were doing with the survey data for downstream operations compared to now using the Topo dot. I would guesstimate, we had to guesstimate, um, if you were going to do a traditional standard conventional survey with that, you would end up with traffic control, lane closures, PPE, uh, overhang devices, and you would still probably never get this exact same deliverable as we were able to do. Um, I would think that would have taken probably about three months worth of field time to do, um, and probably two, a month, probably a month in the office to be able to spit that out into a deliverable. Uh, and it would have cost probably about eight or 10 times more than what it cost us to do it. Yeah. Uh, we were able to come in there with our solution and do the field work in three days and the office work in three weeks and cut the job down in about about an eighth of what it should have been. And what did the customer think of that when you gave them the data? They were blown away. <laughs>